My name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Welcome to the short video on jazz phrasing and the missing link in most of the students I come across and most people coming from an intermediate level guitar getting into jazz and go, yeah man, I know the scales, I know the arpeggios and it seems like I can't really phrase, it doesn't sound like jazz or I just sound scalar, you know, I just sound like I'm playing scales or arpeggios. So in this video, I wanna hand you uh, three tips uh, in a way to make your phrasing better. And it's something to be uh, done in regards to eight notes. So playing with the flow of eight notes. As you might know, uh, eight notes in a way in the jazz world is like the currency. It's like the pennies of jazz, right? So it's very natural and organic to play, as a horn player, to play consecutive eight note lines. And most of the bebop melodies and heads and most of the solos from, what, 1945 to 1965 and plus are mostly 95% made up of eight notes. So why don't we play eight notes? So that's what we're gonna do today. So at first I'm gonna give you a tool to be able to play a consecutive stream of eight notes and get used to that feeling on the instrument. Then the second tip will be on how to phrase and make your solos more jazz-like, even without changing, having more scales and more vocabulary. So it's just a, a simple flick of the mind, that's step two. And step three, I'll give you more advanced stuff to go like machine gun, Pat Martino style eight notes. So let's get going with the exercises. Before we get going, all of the exercises here are gonna be played on the B flat blues, which we'll put on the screen. So it is a 12 bar blues. There's a two, five, one turnaround. Watch out for the G7 in bar eight. So we'll just flash it on the screen. And the scales we'll be using can be anything you already know. I recommend starting with the blues scale, which we'll have another link here. Uh, blue scales, major blues scale, minor blues scale. So the two of those. And then you can do your B flat, E flat and F mixolydian scale. So that's a one, the four and the five, and that's it. That's really all you need to for this video. So let's get going with the step one of the exercises. Okay, for your first step here, what we're gonna do is play an eight note scale, starting with the root. So this is your B flat dominant chord. You're gonna play the scale of B flat mixolydian. So one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. And that's where to stop. So remember in this video, we're not gonna go, we're not gonna finish the scale. We're not gonna go, or bebop, we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's it, we're done. So that's step one. So what we'll do is employ this approach that I picked up from Barry Harris, of course, uh, late Barry Harris, great teacher, which says, well, every chord, you will play the scale up to the seventh. If it lasts two bars, go up to the seventh and back down. So for a first bar in the blues, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's only fine. For the second bar, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And for the third and fourth bar, it's a B flat for two bars. So we're gonna go up and down. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. So this way of playing the phrases makes the beats and the strong notes align. So beat one and two and three and four are really aligned with the notes of the arpeggios actually. So you're killing two birds with one stone. You're playing arpeggios at the same time you're playing scale. So now we'll put it on the tab on the screen. Here's the exercise to have you play consecutive streams of eight notes with the scales without further ado. A one, two, three, four. Now 
now that you're able to get in the flow of these eight notes, you get at least an ability or technical proficiency to just get with that flow of eight notes, and you can let, let that sink into your regular solo. So there's not much you need to do with that. Uh, but if you're more advanced, you're watching this like, yeah, I know my scales. Well, one thing you can do is to start the scales on different scale degrees if you want it. So instead of going from one to seven, like this, you could go from three, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Right, that's a way that you can do all of the scales for this form. Uh, if you want to play more intricate scales, like on the eighth bar, you can do a G altered or something like that, feel free. The important thing is to maintain the flow of these eighth notes. Uh, also, another tip, you might do the scales descending instead of ascending, or you can mix and match, right? So there's always a way to be focused around what the proper scale is on the instrument, not to get bogged down with all the positions and everything, and just really to focus on making the change happen uh, in your mind of which scale you're going to while maintaining the flow of eight notes. So now let's go to the second exercise. Plain and simple, the second exercise is, hey, now that you can play in the flow of eight notes, exercise yourself of getting on and off this wagon, almost like it's a subdivision grid, right? So you have your eight notes and you go, okay, I'm gonna either play eight notes while I solo on that blues, or rests, eight notes or rest. No BS, no in between, not falling the cracks, no triplets, no nothing, you're gonna play eight notes, consecutive eight notes or you rest. What kind of materials do you use? Well, you can use parts of these scales we just practiced in step one. You can use your blue scales, you can use the licks you already have, you can play whatever you want, it's your world, you can rock your world, it's, it's up to you, all right? So I'm gonna just demonstrate this for, say, four courses. Note that the tempo for this video is kinda challenging, it's 140, so it's becoming more of a jazz tempo. If you do this somewhere in the middle, like 100, 110, it's pretty easy. Now, I challenge you, see? If you can crank it up to 140, 160, 180 and see how fast you can go while still maintaining the flow of eight notes before you fall off and try to play other rhythmic figures. So again, exercise two, demonstration, just eight notes or rest. And I'm gonna improvise, let's do this. <laughs> Good job on the step, so I'll admit to the two takes. Typically, I just do my improv in one take, like this is it, YouTube. Uh, now I played, I'm like, I think I can do better than that. So you see the, the importance of improv here is like, you have a constraint, so you can focus all your energies on constraints. You don't have to choose the scales and try to be fancy. You just go, oh, my goal is just to play in eighth notes. And you will have noticed in my improv, like better done than perfect. Perhaps there was a few triplets, perhaps there were quarter notes. I cannot always execute it perfectly, but at least I'm like, hey, this is a thing I'm attempting to do. So if you're more advanced, of course, you will notice you can do that with different rhythmic figures. You could have done it with 16th notes or eighth notes, uh, eighth note triplets, uh, quarter note triplets, or any other mix, quarter notes even, you can do that. So now let's move on to the third step. So the third exercise, which is pretty much of a mastery type of thing, is a Joe Pass prescription or a Barry Galbraith prescription, which says, well, a good measuring stick of your playing is, are you able to perform consecutive eight notes, not stopping, no rests, and still make the changes. So that's the thing for mastery. If you're a more advanced student, of course, uh, I work with a really close group of people on the Jazz Star Accelerator. Uh, book a call that's totally free of charge. It's with me and I can see if I can help you craft a plan so you can better improvise like this on blues or if you have any other phrasing issues or chord melody stuff or anything you want to work on, hop on a call, uh, link in the description below. So the third step, 
uh, I will try and demonstrate, but here's the pickle. Now we were playing from 140. What well, I'll, I'll attempt to do as a demo in this video is go like between 80 and 100 to make sure I can really play without stopping, obeying the rules of the changes and landing on the thirds and using Mixolydian and then an altered scale on the flat line, do, doing all these things in real time. Uh, it requires a whole bunch of energy, a lot of mental RAM to do so and to keep the pulse and to, <laughs> of course, there's a there's a lighting in the studio and I'm sweating. So, of course, uh, there, there's a lot of things going on for me in that, that exercise. But it is a worthwhile endeavor. And I will quote, I think it's Joe Pass said, well, you don't want to play like that. Like, I don't want to hear someone just playing a bunch of eight notes. But again, it's a constraint. It's an exercise. So the constraint here as well, you got to play something. It's got to be an eight note, Pat Martino, and it's got to be in line with the changes. What's fascinating, after you run that enough and you appreciate this exercise, you listen to Pat Martino, watch some transcriptions, like, wow, how could he do that and still be super relevant and a genius for each line that came out without even having a breath? So that's, it's a thing. It's pretty cool. So now let me demonstrate over this B-flat blues in a lower tempo, two courses of consecutive eight notes, and I'll let you go after. Two, three, four. <laughs> guys thanks for watching this video just to recap quickly of course we have step one where you want to play scales one scale in eighth note per chord to get used in the, the flow of eighth note to get in this more horn-like natural phrasing for jazz then the second step is to be able to get on and off stream of eighth notes without bs without the other stuff which is hey rests or eighth notes and then the last step which is much more challenging is and i did it in one take Whew, I was safe, mostly. Uh, it's just to play consecutive eighth notes, just to go, all the things you are, yeah, man, put it on, put on your eye reel and solo just with eighth notes. That can prove to be a challenge. And then after that, you don't need to do much. It will just sort of appear in your playing. That's sort of the magic of practicing well. On that note, please like and subscribe to this video. Uh, I know you guys, uh, you are watching this, about to, only one third of you are subscribed to this channel, so it's really worth a click here because you might discover something in the next video or on this channel that will blow your mind. I keep having interviews with students and people say, Mark, I watched your YouTube video from five years ago, it changed my playing forever. It's free, it's free, just click here like and subscribe and you're done so maybe it's the next video maybe it's this video and again there's a bunch more of free stuff on this youtube channel and on the website itself a blog it's jazzguitarlessons.net improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher have a great day and i'll see you in the next video take care